today on Running to Him. Acceptance of unrighteous behavior in others will ultimately cause unrighteous behavior in your life. Today's reading from the reading plan is in Genesis 19, verse 30, through Genesis 20, verse 18, and we will concentrate on verses 19, 30 through 32. Now Lot went up from Zor and stayed in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him, for he was afraid to stay in Zor. And he stayed in a cave, and his, he and his two daughters, and the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to come into us after the manner of the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and let us lie with him, that we may preserve our family through our father. Lot had surrounded himself and his family with unrighteous behavior by living in Sodom. He traded living righteously for wealth and a cosmopolitan lifestyle. This choice caused him and Israel great grief in the future. Now, while Lot did not participate in Sodom and Gomorrah's sins, he certainly chose to live in that area and to bring up his family with evil surrounding them. This choice led to some significantly depraved thinking within the family. The daughters reasoned that since they were no longer living in Sodom or Zor, there was no chance for them to marry and have children. They reasoned, therefore, that the only option was to have an incestuous relationship with their father to produce a child. Their thinking was wrong because where would their offspring find a mate? If the offspring were able to find a wife or a husband, why would they be able to? Lot also had a hand in the plot. While he did not conceive it, all indications are that he was not aware of it, he twice chose to become drunk to the point of passing out. I'm sure he was depressed over the situation. He lost everything in Sodom's destruction, including his wife. But that is not an excuse for allowing bad behavior. And this brings us to today, to our lives. Are we condoning behavior that's unrighteous in our lives and in the life of the church? Are we excusing sin because we want to get along and not be judgmental? You might have noticed I did not say, in our world or in the United States. I phrased it in the way I did because we cannot control the behavior of those who do not know Christ. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2.14, open quote, But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. Close quote. We can only present Christ and our lives in the world. If they want to accept those principles or trust Christ for change in their salvation, then that's wonderful. But unless they take that action, they cannot change. In the 60s, it was popular to say, you cannot legislate morality. Of course, that statement is wrong, and it happens every day. There's no state whose laws allow for incest. Our cities, states, and country have legislated that law to prevent immorality. But just as other moral laws have changed over time, those laws can also change if they have no external moral basis upon which to stand. Davy Crockett had a saying, Be sure you're right, then go ahead. We need to stand up for what is right in our walk as Christians and in the church's corporate walk. We need to pray for our nation and present Christ through our life and our word. Only a relationship with Christ is the answer to the world's ills. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at phineasjacobus at runningtohim.net.